guys i hope everyone is healthy and hydrated because in this pandemic situations it requires so much care that you should take to resist your body from getting infected uh, so be careful in this pandemic situation and stay healthy welcome back to mbbs treasure channel my name is abhishek and we are going to read today a very interesting topic that is about allergy otherwise known as hypersensitivity in my previous video i have already discussed the general pathophysiology relating to the disease and what are its kinds and also we have discussed the environmental factors affecting or causing a disease and what are its mechanisms and in my previous video of this uh, related to the immune system what are the types of immunological reactions like primary and secondary reactions all we have discussed till now in this video we are going to discuss the next or the next step of the general pathology that is allergy or otherwise known as hypersensitivity reactions hypersensitivity reaction is very 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 important because its concepts will be used for framing the questions in crop number 1 secondly the teachers are the teachers mostly ask about the type of hypersensitivity reactions according to classification because uh, there are so many classifications and they have different mechanism of action so they mostly ask about their mechanisms of action okay so don't worry about anything i'm going to say each and every uh, hypersensitivity reactions with its classification uh, be patient and watch till the end okay so exactly in this video we are going to discuss the topic what is allergy and what are the main classification of allergens and in this video after uh, this slide i am going to show you the next slide in which i am going to demonstrate you the actual process of allergy taking place in our body how or what are the things that occur in our body relating to the allergical condition okay so what do you mean by allergy and what do you mean by hypersensitivity why the allergy is known as hypersensitivity reaction allergy is a reaction or it's a irritation for the over reaction of our immune system if a irritation will occur in our body and our immune system will over react in response to that irritation then only we will feel about this allergy from our uh, basic knowledge we know what are the allergy what what are the things that could call, cause allergy that we call as allergens okay so we are going to read about them and according to the pathophysiology how they are classified what are the actual allergens that are present in our surround surroundings or our inside our body that we are going to read okay so what do you mean by allergy what is its actual definitions its definition says it's a qualitatively altered reaction that affect due to the antigenic substances present in our surroundings or inside our body resulting in restructuring of the immune system and is accompanied by disorders of the target organs first there will be restructuring of our immune system and accompanied by disorders of the target organs this may or may not occur what do you mean by this definition when a irritation will occur to our body then our over reaction of our immune system will perform what do you mean by that the antigenic substance will help in restructuring of immune system it will modify our immune system because our immune system have the immune cells uh, that will try to fight against this antigen and that will be accompanied by disorders of the target organs when a antigen is affecting our body obviously it will be having some kind of targets or target organs that will get disordered so it is a qualitative altered reaction okay this is the definition now this antigenic substance is nothing but called allergen okay the substance that will cause the allergy is known as allergen that we are going to read we are going to read about the classification of allergen how it is classified and 
what are the few examples that we should remember uh, with this relating topic we are going to read okay so first the classification is uh, made according to structure and origin according to structure it can be complete or incomplete this means it the allergens can be completely proteinaceous and incomplete means it can be incompletely proteinaceous like for an example it is hactin but both of them have the capacity or the potential to lead to production of the antibody because they can produce a immune cell reactions so they are both responsible for forming this allergic reactions next comes the origin according to origin it can be divided according to exogenous and endogenous Exo exogenous means the allergens that are present in our surroundings and endogenous means the allergens or the potential allergens that are present in our, our body and they are present in different forms like it can be primary or natural then comes the secondary or acquired endogenous allergens okay now let's read about its examples exogenous examples are like it can be domestic like the dust detergents or the food or for feces that we are bringing for feeding the feces these are the domestic allergens and it can produce the allergy reactions as we already know and the pollen antigens in our surroundings the pollen grains responsible for forming the pollen antigen allergy next comes the epidermal or animal origin animal origin means the products from the animals can lead to the allergy like hairs of animals the dander of wool bird feeders or fish scales next comes the food allergy food allergy means uh, the food that will be responsible for causing the allergy in some people uh, because they are not compatible with those foods they are nothing but the examples of the food allergy like the fish eggs milk and chocolate and etc medicines if the drugs are drugs for uh, for some people are not compatible then it can cause some kind of different reactions in our body that otherwise known as allergic or hypersensitivity reaction insects insects may insects may have insect bites so that may cause the allergic and the industries like the gases and fumes or the waste products of the industries that are produced regularly may cause the exogenous origin of the allergic conditions so next comes is the endogenous type of origin that can be primary that is natural or secondary that can be acquired primary means from the very beginning of our birth it will be naturally present inside our body that may leads to a uh, allergen that can be a possible potential allergen because they can be present Uh, from natural beginning from the birth like for an example the nervous tissue thyroid glands eye lens testicle tissues why are these can cause a allergen or that can cause a allergy because they are present in separate compartments what do you mean by this they are present in separate compartments like for a, for an example it is a separate compartment and this is a blood vessel okay so naturally when these structures of our body are present in separate compartments like nervous tissue are present in spinal cord this thyroid gland thyroid gland follicles eye lens testicle tissues these are present in separate compartments so when they are present when its tissues are present in such separate compartments they usually not come in contact with the blood vessels or the blood elements so unfortunately if there will be any there will be any kind of mechanical injury or tumors or any kind of accidents or anything or any pathological conditions that will lead to coming in contact of this structural tissue organisms or structural tissue things into the blood then it will lead the blood will think that this tissue of our own body as an allergen that is the reason why this this very barrier organs can act or the tissues of the barrier organs can act as a allergen so that is why it is classified under the primary or natural endogenous allergens next comes the secondary or acquired form 
of endogenous allergens it means during the process of any kind of infections what happens our body tries to fight back and in response to that our body try to make many kind of reactions and that reactions will have some kind of moderate products or chemicals or the mediators released into our bloods that may also may act as an allergen so it is written that it's not primarily present but they will be formed after certain reactions during the process of infections and after according to the infection the infection can be simple and infection can be complex simple means for an example uh, the injured tissue by microorganisms of the toxins the toxins will normally get produced in our blood and they will be acting as an allergen next the complex complex means if there will be any kind of cross reactive determinants from of the human tissue with the beta hemolytic streptococcus bacteria it means when the beta hemolytic streptococcus bacteria will affect our body there will be formation of a cross reactive determinant a determinant will be formed inside our body in response to the beta beta hemolytic process and that determinant will act as a allergen to our body so that is that's why it's written during the process of any kind of infections there will be any kind of reactions leading to cause a mediator or some kind of chemical products that can lead to be an allergen okay so this is the structure and origin classification of allergen next so guys now let's talk about a uh, normal way of allergens penetrating our body in the axons this is a very basic diagram that i have drawn uh, to explain or to build the concept of the allergic reactions that or the hypersensitive reactions occurring in our body okay so it's a very basic diagram that you from this diagram you will understand that what are the things or what are the mechanisms through which this reactions or hypersensitivity reactions are occurring okay so it's uh, this this picture seems to be like a face of someone but uh, if you look through this is the picture showing that this is the nasal passages and this is the whole uh, picture of the face so how the ways or what are the ways of allergens that penetrates through our body yes it can be inhalational way it can be enteral that we are eating through our mouth it's going to the esophagus then to the stomach it can be the enteral way it can be the parenteral way parenteral means par means away from the enteral means our git so parenteral means it can be way of uh, uh, while you are taking any kind of injections it can be that form and it can be in the form of contact it can be in the form of transplantation and the finally it can be transplacentarian through the placenta the allergens can also penetrate into our body so let's say for an example this diagram from this very process we will take this inhalational route of allergen penetrating so if this is the allergen that will penetrate into the face okay through the nasal passages what happens then in the nasal mucosa linings there presents a special cell that is called as antigen presenting cells okay so these are nothing but the antigens presenting cells which are present in a rows i have presented in a vertical manner so these are nothing but the antigen presenting cells okay so these cells are specialized cells that will receive the allergens coming through the nasal passages and what they will do they will just stick the allergen coming towards them and they will pass them through them and then they will try to present the same allergen to the next cell that we all know what is that yes that is the t cell okay so what is the function of this allergen presenting cell 
Alert and presenting cells are nothing but the cells I have talked before. It, these are the macrophages that will analyze which kind of allergens are entering and they will also present the cells to the T cell or B cell according to the characteristics of the allergen. So in a normal process where the T cells and B cells will act both towards uh, showing the immunological reactions, then the antigen presenting cells will show or the present the antigen first to the T cell and this T cell is nothing but the T helper cell. Okay. Then what happens? This T cell with this integrated structure fully with this integrated structure of here comes the allergen and the T cell here is the allergen and T cell what will happen from the T cell the T cell will produce some kinds of cell mediators or chemicals in the form of messenger okay so what it's trying to do actually the T cell will try to send the message to the next cell that is B cell and as we all know that B cell is the cell that will produce the antibodies and the antibodies will try to fight with this allergen so this is our total motto in this process this messenger or the T cell will try to pass the information to the B cell then the B cell will produce this antibody okay so this B cell will produce the antibody but the B cell will not directly produce the antibody it will go under certain processes like first the B cell will get converted to blast cell okay or kind of like stem cell okay like lymphoblast cells what is the function of lymphoblast cells they will produce more number of B lymphocytes and when there will be production of more number of B lymphocytes then after this B lymphocyte will differentiate then it will form a special cell known as plasmocyte okay so what is the function of this plasmocyte plasmocyte is the active form of the b cell that helps in production of this antibody so b cell never produces directly the antibody in response to the allergen rather it undergoes certain processes in the form like blast cells then forming more number of B lymphocytes by dividing and then differentiating to form a specialized cell that is known as plasmocyte and this process is known as the process of transformation from blast cell to plasmocyte cells is nothing but is nothing but blastic transformation phase okay so the blast cell will get transformed into the plasmocyte and the plasmocyte will produce those antibodies then what happens this antibodies this antibodies will stick to a particular cell like mast cell okay and this mast cell will then produce mediators and these mediators or the chemical substances are the reason for different kind, kinds of clinical symptoms of allergy these mediators will produce the uh, substances or the chemicals like histamine prostaglandins through which our different bodily changes are occurred so this is the whole thing through which you will be recognizing yes which kind of allergy is it and what are the mechanisms through which it's occurring okay so this is the very basic through which uh, we will be uh, next uh, in few videos or after these videos 
we will be reading about this mediator specifically how or what are the mechanisms of production of these mediators from the mast cells and or what are the different kinds of mediators are produced in different kinds of hypersensitivity reactions so this is the very important part you have to remember okay this is all for today and if you feel uh, it's it's helpful please share with your friends and do subscribe and like my channel thank you so much for watching my video